Hey, it's not Sunday morning, it's Saturday morning. My son's on his way over here. We're getting ready to uh, grind. We only grind half a day on Saturday. And I need to discuss a problem that is not a stump grinding problem. I don't care if you own a bobcat or, you know, any type of equipment that runs on diesel, right? It's a very common problem, but I'm going to point out on a Kubota some stuff, so. Uh, a part number that's hidden on some Kubota, Kubota engines that could be on a skid steer, or, or tractors, on their newer tractors, and it's new, with their new computer run engines. I'll take you over and I'll show you. Now, the motor behind me is a Kohler diesel on these, and you can't really blame the manufacturers for this problem, all right? So, let me turn this around and explain something to you, okay? Some of you know I run stump grinders. That's got an older, older Kubota engine on it with no computers on it. That one there has a newer Kubota engine with computers on it. This one here has a Kohler diesel, but this Kohler diesel is really not, it's a Kohler diesel and it's really, you wanna know who makes it? It says Kohler, right? Made in Italy. It's actually by Lombardier, right? So it's a Lombardier and Kohler combination diesel. I have no problems with it. The problem I, the difficulty you'll have if you have a power unit. That means this could be on a generator or another piece of industrial equipment. Will be, it doesn't use a regular oil filter. They use a canister type, right? And they're very expensive. There's not a lot of aftermarket feed for that. All right, but that's, that's just the only thing I found here. As far as a fuel filter, they have a fuel filter here, and it's just one basic big filter on this. Now, here's where you come into problems when you go with the newer Kubotas, all right? Let's walk down here. All right, so this is the newer Kubota series. Now, these are bandit stump grinders, all right? This is a little problem you're going to have when you go to a dealership. A dealer may be licensed to sell these machines, which whichever motors on it, but they may not have the software to get in a machine and find out what's going on with it. Right? Some dealers do, like that one there has the cola on it, so I have to go to a specialty place if, if I was to have a problem diagnosing a heavier engine type problem. They have the software to get in, licensed software to get into it. All right. This has a Kubota motor on it, and your dealer may or may not have. Now, you think to yourself, well, I'll just go to the tractor dealership. This is an industrial engine, and it's also used on generators, all kind of things, all right? It's an industrial engine, so your normal tractor dealer will be like, hey, I need a tractor number, a model number. Well, this doesn't come out of a tractor, so they'll ask you at the top of your valve cover, you'll see... What this is, all right, gives you the engine code is a Kubota. It's a D1803-T, all right? The T normally stands for, don't hold me to this, turbo, all right? Now, the problem we're having, or you may have, in any piece of equipment, after about, let's say, 200 hours, is fuel. Where you're getting your fuel from, you I remember your fuel tanks, if they're even if they're plastic, but these fuel tanks on these piece of machinery on most generators are steel. All right, temperature changes. It cools down in the evening, and then like here, we're in the summer right now, it is getting up to like 110 or whatever heat index. Gets hot, all right? So they will accumulate moisture, condensation, all right? So you'll have fuel. Same thing happens at fuel stations as far as fuel gets contaminated in a number of ways, right? It, from, it comes from the refinery, then it's transported to a truck, and then from the truck it gets transferred again to a gas station, and then it goes there, and the gas station may not change their, their filters very often. There's a lot of different things. And then another thing, when you're putting fuel in, you'll see I wiped these off before we put fuel in, but there's still particles of dirt especially if you're on skid steers or excavators, that when you're putting the fuel in it, 
you know, you may get dirt in it. And, and it's micro particles. So the water is the first thing, then the dirt. So on these Kubotas, they put dual filters, all right? It comes from your tank, comes up here. This is a filter and water separator, okay? Also has a pump to pump up, pump to, to prime it, all right? Now, on these, the old Kubotas use a mechanical fuel pump. The newer computers, Kubotas on tractors and stuff like that, use an electric fuel pump, right? So it comes from here, goes through here, pulls any water, filters, then comes through a fuel, fuel pump, fuel pump comes here, and then runs up to the engine. This is a fuel filter too. So it has a double filtration, which is great. It's not getting into this, this motor that's computer controlled. And it's saving the motor part, injectors, things like that. But if you do get water in here, you can unscrew the separator here and it'll drain. This connection right here, when you order a new filter, does not. It just screws in. It does not come with it. It just comes with the filter. All right? This has no plug-in on here. Certain other pieces of machinery will tell you and it'll put an idiot light that says, you know, water, so you drain the water out. But I'm going to let you know, after 200 hours, and how do I know? Because I've been doing this a long time. You need to order these ahead of time. So if you buy one of these machines or, or something that you're going to be running a lot, when you buy it, take the chunk, buy it then. Because you may go to your tractor dealer, this filter has no number whatsoever on it. This filter is not made by Kubota. This is a German. It'll say made in Germany on it. No part numbers whatsoever on this. So they'll have to try a cross-reference off the engine, what it could be, blah, blah, blah. And some guys, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You got an industrial engine. We're a tractor place. We don't have it. All right? So this one does have a number on it. Very common filter. Okay. I'm going to give you the code for this. And I'm going to give you a code for this in the description. And you, if, if you want, I'm also going to give you a knockoff of both of these. And they'll be off of Amazon. I don't recommend the knockoffs. If you're, you know what, you got a lot of money tied up here. Buy the original stuff. But if you're trying to save 10 bucks, I'll give you a knockoff number for it. Also, the knockoff number is good for one particular thing. This little plug here, if you happen to break it, right, that's for the sensor. Even the, just this could be over 100 bucks. Just this to screw in there. Now, this is connected to nothing. It's just a plug on the bottom of the filter. But this could cost you over 100 some dollars. These filters, original equipment, if you go to a dealership, you're going to spend for the package deal. Oh, with tax, probably right around 80 bucks. You're going to say, holy, well, I'll just go get a Wix. You don't have a crossover for this, and there may be a crossover for that in Wix, but I tend to go with the Kubota. That's what I came with. I'm going back with But I'll give you the codes to these two and save you the trouble of searching the Internet all over the world for it and just buy them. Because at 200 hours, you're going you're gonna to take that filter off, and you're going to throw it away or take it off, drain it, Keep it as a standby in a box somewhere, a case of emergency. All right, we talked about the filters, right? I'm going to show you where to get them. Now I'm going to tell you something. When you put on the new filters, remember this one here is for water separating. It also has a filter in it too, and you drain it from, from here. So you put the new filter on, right? Here's the other new filter. You put the new filter on. They're empty. You don't want to get air up there into the system, all right? Because once you get an injector pump of air, then you have to crack the injectors, let the air out, and make fuel go. Otherwise, the fuel won't get there. The air will block it. All right, so what are you going to do? I'll show you what you're going to do. See this right here? You're going to crack this open a turn, and you could put a rubber hose on here, run that into a bottle or container or whatever. You know, i got to tell you the right way to do it, EPA. So you turn this open. Hose off of here. This has electric fuel pump. If you can listen to this, hear that? Hear it pumping? All right. So, with this open, it's going to purge. It's going to suck the fuel from here, fill it up. Fuel will go follow it up through here, go through here. It'll shoot out of here. When you see the air is gone, it's just straight fuel coming out of here. Shut off your key. Turn that. It's closed. Now you got 
full fuel coming up here all right and when you start the engine up sometimes when you start them if you change your filters out the engine will be just a little bit like slow or whatever let it run on idle till it runs itself through gets all the fuel and then you're good you're good to go now should you ever run these out of fuel don't ever do that when it gets down to at least a quarter of a tank or just a little bit less stop put fuel in it if you run a diesel out of fuel you will have to most likely crack open one of the injectors down here and let it purge itself open crack them each one and let fuel come out get the air out of it all right but the best way to do it is right here to start with and don't run it out of fuel you will know you'll have a fuel issue and I'm gonna go in there and talk to you about it please remember I'm not trying to talk to anyone like you're ignorant or don't know what you're doing perhaps you don't have anyone around here to help you okay I'm here to help you the best I can so you'll know it's a fuel issue 90% of the time when you're using a piece of equipment and let's say you got it on halfway throttle or more and you start hearing the engine oscillate oh, oh, and it sounds like it's starving out of gas but it's not gas it's diesel but I'm just saying like in a gas motor you would know you were starving out of fuel sputtering same thing with the diesel you'll notice that It'll, you'll hear oscillation going on motor going up and down in RPMs that'll let you know 90% of the time it's a fuel issue so keep it simple stupid do this first if you have the filters of the spare you're right there just do it anyway what, what what's it gonna hurt right so now I'm gonna show you the filters I lay these out in the order they were on the machine remember the German filter is here the water separator and then on this side was the regular fuel filter from Kubota the both Kubotas this is the part number where does it say it says Kubota? Where does it say it says made in Germany, right? So there's your part number. There'll be a link in the description, okay? And over here, there's your part number. Made in Japan. This one is not China, All right? Fuel filter. Just says filter on here, All right? So it's a filter and water separator. So you got dual filtration on it. Now. I'll show you too. I'll put the number in there. I don't want to, but I will for a combo unit and their knockoffs. I believe they're made in China. That has them both, comes in a kit. I'll just put that in there. I'm not saying you got to buy it. I buy the original ones. So you can see from there. Now, another thing you want to drain your tank, drain the tank, and there'll be a magnetic drain plug on the bottom clean that off too put it back up in there and then i also recommend this i use this stuff here there's a lot of other brands this is just what i use right i put a little bit of this in the fuel tank i'm not going to tell you how much it will say on the bottle here or the jug whatever you buy it will tell you the amount to put in the ratio to fuel Put it in there and all, it just helps, okay? It's not gonna hurt. And uh, it's lubricity and a lot of cetane builder in there, especially in the winter time, you know? Anyway, you do that, you'll be back on the road, you'll be running your equipment. So, see, it was easy. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. These are just maintenance tricks, all right? This is stuff you can do. You don't want to take your machine to a shop to change the fuel filters and oil filter, all right? So, say you these two filters. You brought it in with a problem, the engine's oscillating or whatever. Then you're going to charge you a, a dealership or a tractor place. It's going to charge you a diagnostic fee, all right? And, they, and then they're going to change the filters. Filters are from them, and like, like I said, they're like 70, 80 bucks, something like that. You buy them from... And then they're going to upcharge you for the parts. Then you got to pay over a hundred and something dollars an hour for a simple fix. That's probably oh, I got the prices here. The German filter is thirty-two fifty on Amazon. That's the water separator filter. The other one, that's a regular fuel filter, is thirty-one fifty. All right, so you got like what sixty-five dollars of parts off of Amazon. You could order them, keep them in your box, keep them on the truck. And you're good, all right? Plus, this, this 
the the diesel cleaner there i don't know what that stuff costs I, I keep it in my shop i just use a little bit of it at a time and it probably saves you three four hundred dollars with the repair going to a tractor place all right so this repair goes for you tractor guys too because a lot of the new tractors run a double filtration system too all right so god bless you hopefully hopefully this helps you out i don't want anyone to feel like hey uh, i wasn't smart enough to you are smart enough to do this if you're a young guy don't panic when you if the problem happens stop take a breath you can do this and you know i'm going to tell you another little trick if you do have a parts place or the um the parts guys or even the mechanics at the tractor place or whether you have a tractor or you have a stump grinder i don't care what dealership it is go around back to the mechanics every now and then you know they know who you are a box of donuts goes a long way guys what is that private pile sir jelly donuts sir a jelly donut sir yes sir how did it get here sir i took it from the mess hall sir all right People remember you. They remember you and say, yeah, you know, hey, why don't you just check that or whatever. I've had things 20 years ago. I go in there and say, you know, I'm a little perplexed on this one thing. All right, all right, hey, try this. And I'm out of there in five minutes. You know, they could have made me drop the machine, blah, 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 and stuck it to me. Instead, you know, and people like to help nice people. Remember that. No one wants to help a hee-haw. All right. God bless, man. Call me a asshole one more time. All right, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. Oh, stop crying, punk ass. Go ahead. <laughs>